So thank you all. I'd like to invite you to um, our session now about um, e-audits and uh, other remote auditing. And I'll be the moderator for today. And I'll let the, uh, the folks presenting kick this off. Thanks, Darren. Uh, so my name is Michelle Bryan. Um, I've been working with iTrack for two years. I am by trade a safety person and have dabbled into the Microsoft field with iTrack doing uh, some really cool projects with doing safety. And my previous lifetime, I was in the cattle industry and it um, now we're doing the uh, cool combination of doing e-audits with the cattle department. So I'd like to introduce you to Shannon, and she's the business manager for VBP. Um, and she can tell, do you want to introduce yourself, Shannon? Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. So my name is Shannon Argent. I'm the business manager for Verified Beef Production Plus which is an industry initiative that offers training and certification services for the Canadian beef industry. Um, we have been auditing since 2003, so we have a, a little bit of history and a little bit of background, um, but we do service the whole country of Canada and uh, it's, it's a varied and remote region, as we all know. Um, so we're looking at number one, making sure that we're getting the best value for our producers that we can from our audit. And number two, we're keeping costs as, as reasonable as possible. So first thing we're doing is developing our electronic audit management system that iTrack has been very, very uh, helpful in helping us develop. Um, which includes being able to score and collect metrics on everything that we need to do. Um, and number two, the, it allows us to look at the development of a remote audit for uh, management during COVID, especially in provinces where there's provincial um, border restrictions and, we, and there's not auditors in that province. So our industry needs to continue because we have stakeholders and it's, uh, they would like to make sure they retain that public trust of their customers. So we need to be able to provide what we can. So that's what we're that's what we're looking at and that's what we're trying to, to develop. Um, do you want any more than that, Michelle? Or you want to take it away that's from perfect. here? I'll take it away. So with our, our e audit, we from from the start, we could say it's a little bit of a challenging process because we are trying to meet expectations from multiple certifying bodies at the same time. So we're trying to develop one tool, one scoring method where we're trying to reach the animal care guidelines, uh, the food safety guidelines, and also sustainability programs that we're trying to meet those requirements. So we have done, um, we've worked with other nonprofits where we've done our safety auditing tool that's working with a core system or the small employer core. And so with this one, it's a little bit different. So we don't, we didn't do a big form for this one. We actually broke it down into little micro bits where there's going to be like a parent form. And then the step one through eight is going to be the child forms of that. So what we're going to do in this presentation is we're going to go through the process that we have done with the e-audit. And then we also have some shots on um, what we're doing with the third parties that are uploading data and then how we're training our auditors in doing the remote auditing and the processes that we're piloting to see what's working well and what isn't working well. Um, and with the COVID not being able to go on the farm as well as um, the technical challenges of working with auditors that may not be familiar with technology or still have a flip phone. So we've been working through that process and like I'm really proud of uh, the progress we've made. So we're just going to start with um, with step zero. Um, thank you. So with the step zero, what that would be is we have an auditor that is going to assign um, 
say a producer calls and says, hey, I would like to get my audit, audit done. So what's hap what will happen is we will send out a external link to the farmer or producer, and then they are going to upload all of these documents that we would generally see when we are on the farm. The next thing we would do is we would actually go on and have a, a remote meeting with them and look at the information and then we would use our audit evidence collection checklist and we would go through there and while we're talking to them we would be clicking off some items and not making elaborate notes because we're trying to be respectful of their time and our time and then um, so that is kind of like what we've done is we actually have the two processes in one where we have the remote audit and then if we were actually going to go onto the farm now if we were going to go onto the farm we would do step three and do a contact meeting and this is where we would record anything that we might need to think about when we go on farm such as a biosecurity um, requirements or if we need to do a covid um, health check before we go on to the farm but if we are not going on farm then we would be skipping steps four and five so step six is where we're going to have the audit scoring and our observation method and that is where the cool power bi dashboards are going to come from that we're going to show and then we have our closing communication so this process um, the safety people that are on this process you can see really aligns with what you're doing when you're doing core auditing it's just a different type of auditing with cows um, and then our last step is the eighth step is where we are actually going to take all of the time or the billing that goes with this certain account in this certain audit um, it'll all be linked together under one so you're actually not looking and searching for things everything's kind of nicely packaged in this one one process next step or next slide so this is an external form so this would be the form that would go to the producer and you can see here that it's blue at the top and that is not really the colors that we have however we have an enhancement request on our next great or update that it is going to we can pick the colors on that as well um, so we're always constantly if there is a customer request we are always um, going to be upgrading and enhancing the product for our clients so with this the producer can upload um, some of their pictures or anything that we've asked them to do so Darren you can go to the next slide so the pictures that are on here is actually from Shannon's house because we are using her operation for testing. And so here Shannon went on and uploaded pictures of her shoot. Uh, so here's the pictures of the shoot that Shannon uploaded. And then we can go to the next slide, Darren. Here are some additional ones for feed storage. And you can see in the comments here that they can put comments in and the auditor can go in on the next phase of this audit and they can go in and make comments with each one uh, next one darren so here is what the remote is like okay so what i'm gonna do then shannon is just gonna ask some questions about the the, the parts uh, of your operation that that we normally will deal with in an audit so the the areas are um, in and you are aware, but uh, I just normally would speak to a producer and say that the uh, the audit process has evolved over time. And when I was originally involved in it, uh, really the questions were just about on-farm food safety, and, mm -hmm. and they were restricted to that. But now it has expanded with the, the involvement and the invitation to uh, various um, folks in the uh, industry uh, and we have asked and invited people who are part of the market for beef to have some input into what uh, would improve the audit process and so there are a number of questions about sustainability and the way that your operation uh, actually uh, 
the way that your operation fits into a sustainable model are part of the questions now. So uh, you you might be surprised at some of the questions, but some of the questions are from a if you like from an urban perspective, and so. Uh, when I ask the questions, uh, it, it may not seem, you know, to be applicable to an audit process, but it is part of making this more valuable to everyone who is involved, and that's why we include these questions. All right, and that's the uh, end of the video there, Michelle. Okay, so our next... Um item here is there's some videos that the producer uploaded. Uh, so with iTrack, you can upload some substantial videos. You can see that one's 13 kilobytes. Um, so we can advance to the next slide and we can show the video. So what we're doing is when we can't actually be on the farm, we want to be able to assess what we're what we're what would we would generally be auditing so we have certain things that in the audit process that we are asking the producers to submit uh, so we can get a visual aspect of it even though we're actually not boots on the ground we can go to the next slide so here are some of the checklists that we were talking about um, i know some of us who've done safety auditing uh, there's generally a lot of note taking that happens. So what we're trying to do is allow for them to have some descriptive within each question. And then we're trying to have some checklists so it's a little bit easier for them to um, over the phone go through things quickly. And it's also helping new auditors if they haven't done the process or aren't really comfortable, it's kind of a training and a checklist as they go through. So this part here is talking about being a community, being involved in the community, and uh, you can see here volunteering, 4-H, mentorship. So this is kind of one of the questions we use as an icebreaker as we are starting to talk with the producer. So we can go to the next slide. So what's happening in here is that the this is after the fact we're doing training on how the procedure went. So what we're doing is we have two experienced auditors or actually our auditor training and an auditor discussing on how they are going to be scoring each one of these items. And they're going back and forth and discussing. They had records. They did not have records. I felt that they showed um, they had knowledge on the topic. Um, and so they're basically going back and forth discussing um, why they chose what they did. And it's actually really informative for if we have new auditors coming in that they would actually hear the communication of it. So it actually is really good from a training standpoint as well. So, Joe, I would look at that question from a little broader angle from all the other information that 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 was gathered. Um, you know that they're keeping uh, good records. Uh, you know that there's a veterinarian involved. Uh, you know of the personal experience with the toxins and uh, uh, scours and and to me, um, I think you look at the broader picture, uh, you, you, you might not even have to ask the specific question. It's just a gathering of information that you've got about the whole operation. And that's that's one of the things that, that, that when I would, would sort of uh, ask myself the question of how things are done on an operation, Miles, I would agree with that. So that's, that, that's, that's one of the things that I always ask myself was, how are things done here? You know, so we saw lots of evidence of, of, of record keeping as well as lots of clean and neat, you know, so that would tell me that, you know, being quite fastidious about manure cleaning, et cetera. So, so the, Certainly, there was a, a general discussion. I would agree with that, and I, I don't see a three there, but a two. So here is one of our inspection. It's actually an inspection control that we use for the audit. 
So what we're doing with this is we have a scale of not applicable and three, two, one, zero. So what we're doing is that if it is NA, it's actually forcing a corrective action to go through. And if it is a three, you can see it's kind of a brighter green. If it's a two, um, it's still a light green. If it's yellow, it's a cautionary. And if it's a zero, it's a red and it's going to force a corrective action. So it is based, it's a really cool process to go through that. So the next slot or the next um, box off to the right is actually creating a corrective action. So if the system is forcing you to do a corrective action, um, it is going to come up in this this new in the corrective action request it's going to ask you what the car is and those are all going to be linked back to the questions so we're going to show um, later on in the presentation what the power bi is going to look like from a corrective action standpoint so we can go to the next slide so here is our Power BI dashboard that's within our Microsoft Teams. So we can, our internal people can all see the, in, the dashboard at all times. Uh, next slide, Darren. So here's an example of audit observations. So we have options where interviews, uh, documents, policies, procedures, direct personal observation of activities. So we actually have this for a couple of our certifying bodies. They're asking the same, they're asking for how do you determine your, your, your answers. So this is kind of tagging them of how you decided that you've seen the cattle and that's why. So then on this Power BI chart, we're actually taking metrics on which questions and which pillars we're doing and generally what observations we're using for those. Next slide. So here's the cool part. This is like our little report card that we have. So you can see these are the audit questions here and those, uh, you can see the color coordination. The color coordination is matching what we showed you on the 3210 scale. And then in here is we're doing a you're basically comparing what the scores are compared to comparing them to the cohorts of if it was a cow calf producer. We're basically giving you a report card based on the group you're in. So say, for example, for the safety people on board, you're going with a small employer in your same industry code. Same thing, but just in a different way. Next slide. So here is our corrective action metrics which are super cool. Um, so we can, with the corrective actions, we have them tagged basically to each pillar that we use. So we have animal care, animal health, um, emergency response plan. So anytime there's a corrective action, we can take proactive measures as an organization to, okay, hey, these are our top um, corrective actions that we have on our producer. Maybe we should do some more education on those. Uh, so it's all part of our continuous improvement plan. And then we can also track it by what process we're doing. And we can also track it by which auditor has outstanding corrective actions. Next slide. Um, and then just one more thing with I just wanted to throw this slide up because I knew our audience would be primarily safety. But what we've really done as a group is taken a risk based decision. So depending on we're very familiar with this with in the health and safety field, but we're actually doing very similar things with basically food safety. So it's kind of a cool process, but we've had many discussions about it. Um, so yeah, it's a very interesting process, but at the end of the day, when we're not really sure how we should do something, we always end up going back to the risk matrix. Uh, next slide, Darren. So I didn't wanna go too much into the auditor training part because in the conference, there has been a lot of stuff talking about training, um, but we're also using iTrack to manage our, our auditor training and making sure that we're compliant with CFIA's requirements for what they require auditors to have. Um, so iTrack is going to be a good process 
to help out with this and we can also do exams and that such on there. Next slide, Darren. I think we're open for questions. That was a very, very great overview of what we're doing, Michelle. Thank you for that. Uh, Michelle, this is Geo here. Would it be all right if I asked a question? Well, it depends what your question is, Geo. <laughs> uh, at the end of the session here, you mentioned that at the end of the day, when health and safety people aren't sure about how to proceed, the risk matrix is a is a default tool. And as someone who's not that well familiarized with all the aspects of health and safety, would you be able to share kind of why that is? Sure. So I guess um, from a health and safety side of things is when like we, we could talk about COVID for an example is when we're talking about COVID and doing a risk assessment on COVID um, right now, our general, um, I guess, access on a COVID matrix is people like it's the pair we've got people environment assets and reputation well with what we've done with this covid is um we've actually made new risk matrices where we're talking about okay what about the people that are doing the work so instead of doing um so if you go darren do you want to actually go to the risk matrix here i think it's back a couple um so this is for cattle and we're talking about um, the injury that they're having um, based on production loss. So if you take this same type of thing and go, okay, if we have vulnerable workers out, what what is their risk of of death? So if we we have if our population or our workers are vulnerable workers, and we have a lot of them, we're going to be more at risk just because of the people that we have. Um, in our workforce. So we've made the risk matrix where we have, okay, what, what tasks need to be done? So what I would do, what we, um, we have a risk matrix, matrix to decide which tasks are low risk and which tasks are high risk. So I would pair my high risk workers with a low risk task. So maybe I'm going to keep my vulnerable workers that might have pre-existing conditions and I'm going to put them working at home in a low risk situation versus having them at a high risk area. So it all kind of comes down to, are you trying to make the best decision and what tools are we using? And that's where this kind of comes into play, I guess. I don't know if that answered your question, Gio. Well, that was, yeah, that was all real uh, educating. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So Michelle, Darren here, I actually have a question. Um, when it comes to remote audits, you know, you've, you've heard about, um, you know, the, the meat packing plants and, you know, there's been a lot of flack, right, from, um, you know, the, the inspectors there doing their audits remotely. Um, you know, it's been all over the news and I wonder if you have any comment on, you know, remote audits and, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you know, with the COVID, they, be uh, the way of the future or you know what we're going to have to do to you know kind of more accept them as as the the default nowadays i would like to defer that question to anyone else on the call yeah they'll take that one okay. <laughs> sure <laughs> sorry i should plug in my headphones i unplugged them to to do some stuff give me two sacks here because i will totally take that call i know you will that's why i said that <laughs> <laughs> okay so the it's not just the fact that we're hoping to rely on um, remote auditing to to replace on-farm audits. The thing is, it's actually going to enhance our data collection for our auditing purposes. Cattle production is a year-round thing, especially on a, on a cow-calf operation. So, you know, you get audited or do an audit event once a year, but production happens over the whole year. So, and I'm going to just kind of use an example because it might be easier to visualize this. I'm a cow calf operation. I would like to be audited or certified, but I'm, I, I, I'm not going to do it until October or November when I'm not grazing and I can't prove, I can't prove what I'm doing 
write in my grazing management plan. All I do, I might have a written record of pasture movements, but I really don't have any way of showing what I'm doing on farm. So part of this is doing data collection throughout the year on the on the whole production cycle that then they can use at a point in time to prove what they're doing right. Does that answer your question? Um, yeah, it does, Shannon. That's that's awesome, right? It's, you know, it's again, um, you know, from your explanation, it's not just about, you know, doing remote audits because you can't visit it, but, you know, you can, you know, throughout the year, right, continually audit and collect different pieces of information, which in the end gives you, um, you know, what I think is going to be, a, you know, a, a much better, uh, you know, wholesome picture of, you know, what's what's happening in the operations there. Absolutely. Yep. Well, and I also wanted to just say like a picture's worth a thousand words, right? I've done lots of safety auditing and you cannot bring your phone a lot of times, like when you're out on a mega project, there's no way you could take a picture. But that picture would just be so much easier than trying to write a paragraph on what you saw. Right. So I do feel like from a documentation standpoint that it seems now that you could actually take a picture of something, it would just make things so much easier than having to write something down and maybe something gets lost in that translation. And same thing with the checklist is where sometimes you're being rushed or something happens and you might forget to ask a question. Um, at least having the checklist where the auditor can have that stuff on their mobile if they are boots on the ground. I think that just really helps the process of doing consistent standardized audits, whether or not it's uh, on a farm or doing it for OHS reasons. Well, yeah, and, it, and it really, I'm going to just chime in a little bit too, because it really enhances our ability to collect information. We have a five year audit cycle, and only one of those years is, is on farm. So if we can validate uh, a remote data collection procedure or remote audit, be able to collect that and be able to verify by multiple auditors, then that gives us a lot of credibility on the other five years or four years of our audit cycle when we're not on farm. And it keeps our costs down for producers for not having an auditor on farm, but also enhances our public trust, which is what we're about all day long. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense, Chad. And um, also, uh, Michelle, you know, you're saying a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Um, a video is probably worth 10,000 words. <laughs> so the fact that you're, you know, um, allowing, you know, both, um, you know, pictures and video, right, to be uploaded to the audit is, is pretty awesome. Well, and it's and just another thing on that is um, we asked the question, like, how much video can you upload? And we were talking about, well, how much is it going to cost for the uploading? And that's what we were worried about right away um, when we're like, well, how many videos are we going to do? But from our testing, it seemed like there there was no issues with stuff uploading. Um, Shannon, did you have any issues when you were uploading no. items? It yeah. was, and I, I really tried to push the biggest videos I had on my phone uh, up there, even though I guess you didn't see a couple of them. Maybe I didn't push them all, but... Um, there was, yeah, I, I really tried to test the system when I did this and, and I, I had no issues and I don't think anybody had issues looking at what I uploaded. So I think that's really a positive. Yeah. And what type of uh, volume are you expecting uh, with the system in terms of, you know, how many auditors um, will you have, you know, working with it and, you know, what's what's the outreach look like for your, uh, obviously the, the target audience, the, uh, the end uh, producers and everything? So we what we're looking we we right now have around 1250 give or take active operations. Um, we, there's 60,000 beef operations. So we would like to be able to meet the demand if all 50,000 would like to get certified. Um, I don't know if we'll ever reach that target, but even if if we do half, that's 25,000. So it, that's a that's a lot of of information being uploaded because they do a yearly renewal event, whether it's a record assessment or an on farm audit. Um, so we're we're looking at significant video storage because we know that 
you know, our producers really like to capture what they're doing on a day to day basis on their farms. Um, we're really very grateful for the fact that Microsoft is offering us, a, a, you know, credits for a nonprofit and we can continue to offer our value to producers and allow them to produce the food they need for our people with, uh, without a lot of added cost. Yeah, which is key to, to you know, some of the other folks online is um, because you are a nonprofit, right? Um, you know, yeah. you do you do get that, um, you know, special licensing and, you know, the credits and all that from Microsoft, which, you know, obviously does uh, help out tremendously, right, from the cost side of things. Yeah, it really does. And then our producers are, are free to upload what, you know, what they feel is valuable for their operation. I think that's really important and it's really important. I mean, there's multiple, multiple studies coming out right now on the value of sharing your story as a beef producer um, on, on what you're doing on your operation to gain the public trust. And we can't do it if we don't have an avenue to, to share. So this is really, really valuable for us. Perfect. Thank you. Um, All right, I'll I'm going to ask one question to Shannon, I guess. Is there any other of the commodity groups that are doing e-auditing right now? I don't know if any of them know. Um, um, dairy, dairy, I think, does have a uh, an e-audit system that they're trialing with iPads, but it's not a, um, they don't allow their producers to upload information. So, gotcha. Kaylee, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, so, um, you could introduce uh, yourself, Kaylee. Hi, so <laughs> I'm the framework manager for the Canadian Roundtable for Sustainable Beef. Um, and Verified Beef Production Plus is, um, one of our, and is the largest certification body, um, for our standard. And it is because of the work and, um, that they've done in establishing this type of system, um, and uh, this e-management system um, that we it helped um, us through that approval process of allowing remote audits um, as that does have to go through our stakeholders and approved by our council. As part of developing that, I do monitor other sustainability standards. Um, and there is multiple. So we have the um, forestry, we have the Marine Stewardship Council allowing them, Rainforest Alliance allowing, um, and we, it continues, um, the smaller standards now are start, um, issuing, um, what they're allowing for auditing in light of COVID. Um, and so remote is becoming, um, for, for COVID and we're going to be seeing, I think, some shifts in the sustainability system, um, as, as far as how, uh, audits are done, but we're, um, Verified Beef is really leading the way, um, because of their um, the work that they've done in establishing their processes. Awesome. Well, thanks, Kaylee. So if there's uh, no other um, questions, I'll just uh, wrap up this meeting. Um, you know, thank you, Michelle. Um, thank you, Shannon. And uh, thanks for all the input here. Um, just letting you all know that uh, some of the up upcoming uh, sessions here within, within our conference. And, um, you know, this session was recorded, so uh, you know, we will do, be distributing the, the session and uh, obviously you can reach out to Shannon uh, and Michelle too if you have uh, any further questions. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for, for attending this session. It was awesome and, you know, personally, I learned a lot too. So thanks to you all. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, everyone.